Thanks for coming members on YouTube. That's another thing too. If you're a regular YouTube member and you use Super Chat and that kind of stuff, you become a member. It's a great way to do it. Thank you, Michael Anderson. He says, I'm going to put all my fridge word magnets in the blender just so the world makes me any kind of sense. I know, Michael. I don't know what the fuck. And then like cover yourself in in uh, like... It, it, in a like a wear an old night suit and then just have someone throw them at you like some sort of magnetic ejaculate I don't know what the fuck but you're you, you guys know what a big fan I am of when Republicans turn on their own now I have no evidence that Greg Kelly is a Republican uh, I do know that these people voted Republican I think Greg Kelly is a Trump lover that's not quite the same thing. And I think this falls into the distinction that Biden was making. Um, this says, the title of this is, Greg Kelly, am I the only one who heard what Biden said? Uh, he examines Biden's speech in Pennsylvania's many gaffes and the media's defense of him and more. I'm sure, unlike, uh, you know, what I, I mean, unlike what I do with Greg Kelly, I'm sure he won't cut Biden out of context. Uh, but get your popcorn ready because Biden's bad, but the rhinos are far worse. Always wrong. This group, these are mostly Republicans, people who identify as conservative, and they are almost always wrong. <laughs> hey, look at that. Greg and I agreeing right out of the box. Isn't that sweet? Maybe there is hope for America. Bridges are being built left and right about Trump and oh I see <laughs> always wrong about Trump there uh, uh, okay I totally I walked into that rake I can't believe I fell for it was my gullibility was built on my my love for humanity and my open heartedness I I hope you guys can see that that I it's not that I was you know a dupe it's just that I was hoping for better Really? Because they always have been. They yeah, always. Ever. That the one thing they hate, okay, is Donald Trump. I mean, they like everything Republican, but for some reason, they talk about him and they're always wrong. Like they said, he won't do any interviews uh, after the Mar-a-Lago search and see, and he's been every... always have been. Let's go through what the swamp said. Even the conservative part Ugh, the, of the swamp. The rhinos. Has There's a conservative part of the swamp. In the swamp, the swamp. Saying about Trump. You know what their latest thing is? Hmm. Uh, you can't talk about Trump anymore. It just helps the Democrats. Well, <laughs> gee, uh, uh oh, I think he's on to me. Hey, uh, Greg, uh, not only is it part of my business model, but uh, you bet your ass I'm hanging this albatross around your fucking neck. Well, I'm not going to play that game. <laughs> I know. We can always count on you to just slide belly up right under Trump anytime he slips. Crank out with a big smile on your face. I think he has a great record. Mm. It should be defended. And he has a great vision for the future. And there's yeah, absolutely. I mean, have you seen his health care bill? I mean, come on. There's nothing wrong with that. When we no, start, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with having a vision for the future. Listening to the swamp, taking their cues. Why those fuckers? Don't they realize how beautiful he is? He's wonderful. He's a wonderful man. And none of you deserve him. And he's the most important man we've ever had. Hold on. Um, let's see. I'm going to find something. Hold on. <laughs> this is pretty good. Hold on one second. Maybe this is how I can... I can do this without hurting myself. <laughs> Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Greg Kelly Theater. Hi. Hi, Greg. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, Greg. They're mistreating him as so wrong uh, and bad and wrong. Uh, why would they do such a thing? Why would they do it? 
Why won't they just leave me alone? I don't know. Tell them about it. You were doing it. Why don't you know it goes? I don't know why. Should we? They've always been wrong. They've always been wrong. They're so wrong. Quick review. Number one, the swamp told us he would not run for president. No. That's right. The swamp didn't like it. They don't even know. And he did run. Well, he walked really weird. The way Willie actually. He walks and then he stands in a funny way where he leans forward really hard. Really run. Once he got in the race, they said there is no way he can win the nomination. He can yeah, especially with the excess Hollywood tape. And you're like, no, how were they supposed to know we loved it when he said grab him by the pussy? Yeah. Can't beat all these professional politicians. No. He can't beat Jeb Bush. Do you remember this stuff? Then yeah. when he got the nomination, they tried to take it away from him, by the way. Uh, they said he could not beat Hillary. Yeah, he lost only by three million votes. <laughs> we know how that went. Now, before we, yes, they said he could not beat ISIS. Now. I'm I'm going to go through some of his accomplishments. Yeah, one of them isn't defeating ISIS, because ISIS was who attacked us when we were leaving Afghanistan. But don't bring it up! It's but upset. remember, remember, uh -huh. the swamp, they were trying to sabotage him every step. That's terrible that they would do that. Step ...of the way, all they right, did? with the Mueller probe and a lot of oh, other stuff, no. big and small. All big right. and small, like his, like his gut and his penis? I don't know. Couldn't defeat ISIS? He did. They he said did? he could not create peace with North Korea? Yeah, they just made he missiles. Did. Uh, oh, they said he could not build a wall. He did. It fell down, but he still built it. Granted, it's not finished. Well, he, he finished the part he said he finished. He was going to do an extra part, then it didn't work. But look at that. Yeah, he built a wall and it made it worse. <laughs> That's a wall. Uh, it's, what else? Well, it's a slat fence. So much is also, the swamp say you cannot move the embassy in Israel. Well, he said it was a bad idea. Not from that Tel Aviv. Of course, can do it. It's just stupid. To Jerusalem <laughs> for a lot of reasons that was said to be very... Very, very difficult. Yeah, I mean, Trump yeah, said, I don't, I don't think so, and just did it. And it was hugely, hugely successful. Very. I have to say, this face is fucked up. It's like crying face. Like, this is a filter, and it's like it makes my face hurt just looking at it. Popular right. in Israel and here. Should have been done a long time ago. What else did he say? Yeah. The swamp. The swamp said, well, he can't beat China on trade. We he didn't. They only bought one third of the first phase of his three phase trade deal. And they said it's COVID and I have been doing this for such a long time. He started to beat him on trade. How about this? You can't deregulate, watch him. <laughs> you know, the stock market's performance uh, during those precious four years. Yeah. It ain't shit. A lot of that was because of deregulation. No, it wasn't. And the economy. It's just post 2008. Economy. Uh, but keep saying it, it sounds good. How about this? Could not create uh, ooh, the vaccine. We all heard that. No way. He, he can't. He didn't create the vaccine. It's, it's uh, by the way, is it good because he made it or bad because he made it? I don't know. How am I supposed to know? Am I supposed to take it or not take it? I love Trump, but I can't take it anymore. I don't know. Wait, can you do the vaccine? Dr. Fauci even told us no vaccine in, uh, you know, it would take three years. He did it safely and that's why a lot of years trump supporters don't take it in less than a year uh, i can and go they still won't take it go on and on like this let's see yeah why don't you talk about more stuff he made up that maggots hate what's next uh could not create middle east peace have you heard of the abraham accords yes i heard about them it's like the abraham accords are like if you use an auto harp and it takes two hands and, a, and another appendage yeah, people should have been should have been awarded the Nobel Prize for that. Okay, what? Right. What else could not or would not nominate conservative judges? Why? No one said that. Could, why did they think that? They thought that was the only thing he was going to do. He turned out to be the most pro-life president ever. Yeah, they didn't rule with him on a lot of stuff though. That's why he's not president anymore. He's still pissed about that. And also this, and possibly my favorite. Oh, he's the type of guy who's going to start a war. He's going to start a war. No, you know, he ends wars. All right. Well, I mean, he wanted to stay in Afghanistan. And, and he, it, the only reason we left Syria is so the Russians and the Kurds, so the Kurds could get killed. Right? I know, mine's terrible. That's one hell of a record. It's great. Most of it has nothing to do with the United States and only rich people. Infrastructure bill, health care plan, 
roads, bridges, anything. I don't even know. Uh, to defend, nothing to be ashamed yeah, of. I don't care be... if he turns certain people on the left off or certain people in the swamp. He is what he is. And yeah, he, an ex-president. No, 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 quit bringing it up. And it happens to be great. Whereas Joe Biden, I want to- Is president. <laughs> do this again. He is decrepit. He is lost. He is strange. He has, uh, he's the chief executive of the most powerful guy. He's the leader of the free world. Quit bringing it up. He is losing. We all- He's looking at someone who's up in the bleachers. All can see that. And, you know, the swamp, they're always concerned about messaging. Ooh, the messaging is an important- That's true. Messaging is very terrible. Okay, this is actually like hurting my face, just just wearing that one. Holy shit! It's so important what you say. Yeah, it is. Um, but you know, not people like you, Greg, because no one listens. That that's predicated on the idea that if you say something bad or wrong or that fucks things up, if people will hear it and then it will change their behavior. You don't have to worry about that. Fill your boots, man. Nobody gives a shit. Not really, actually. It's what you do in America that really, really counts. It's your- Yeah, it is. You're right. Like pass an infrastructure bill, pass a rescue package, get most of the country uh, vaccinated, pass gun legislation, put a cap on, on corporate tax that's never happened before. So we, there's a minimum 15%, just like capital gains. Your lived experience. So yes, your lived experience. You Yes. You, you're saying- I'm going with your, what I'm hearing you say is that it's better to be older and have a lot of things to draw from. Okay. Okay. And we've been experiencing Joe Biden's in America. And for a quick reminder, okay, we've lived it. We know it, but here's a way I think it works. I call it wag Joe chaos Biden. All right. Huh? Wag Joe chaos Biden. Please keep your dick in your pants. Wag Joe Chaos Bite. It's a little mnemonic device. Uh-huh. We did the- Wait a minute. You have to set up a mnemonic device to remind people of stuff you think he's terrible at because you're afraid they'll forget? Why would they forget? Oh, oh, because everything's going better. That's why. Just yesterday, quick review if you don't mind. Are you ready? WAG stands for Woke Afghanistan and Gas Prices. All yeah, but if gas prices come down and we're not in Afghanistan anymore and and he just did a big speech about funding the police. I mean, look, I understand why you like the word. Uh, it explains what you do in the park. All the reasons why Joe Biden has failed us, okay? How Th those are all the reasons. These are the three. I mean, there's obviously, a, there has to be more. Can't just be that he's he woke up and went to work, I guess. Uh, Afghanistan, which we're not in anymore. I guess Greg's still upset about that. And gas prices, which have gone down in the last two months and will continue to go down, is bad. How about Joe? Justice Department oppressing enemies? That's bad. That's the weaponization. This is great. This is, I can't wait till we get to chaos. Justice Department oppresses enemies. Of the state. Is it okay if I just put of the state? Justice Department oppresses enemies of the state. And by the way, why why the Marxist language? You know, oppressors and oppressed. Why, why you got to default to that, Greg? What's that about? We're like three weeks away from, from MAGA Republicans chanting in the streets, we have nothing to lose but our chains. ...of the Justice Department. That's what they accused Trump of doing, but they actually did it. Chaos, okay. Well, he is... He is incapable, so. The C stands for crime. This is a lot. Out of control. Hunter out of control. A, an abysmal approval rating. So two things that are up and one that you think is down, which is now up. Oh, obscenity. Oh. Really? Obscenely forcing children into having ridiculous, weird, inappropriate conversations about gender, even gender reassignment surgery. Uh, I'm sorry, how is Joe Biden doing that? What? The supply chain for S. Yeah, well, I left that on there. I mean, we're, we're over it. <laughs> Biden, B is for border. We have no border. I we have no border. So uh, if you're watching this uh, simulcast in Spanish, 
come on down, I guess. D is for inflation. It's out of control. D is for disunity. So much disunity when he... <laughs> Energy gone. Promise to unify us. Energy. <laughs> we are now energy dependent. No, we're not. Asking Saudi Arabia for their oil. No, we're not. They're, we're asking them to add it to the market, not for us. And no one around the world respects us. Yeah, well, no one that matters, you know, just the NATO countries and our allies again, you know. Obviously, we have totally lost the disrespect of everyone on Russia's Channel One, or as I like to call it, uh, Greg's future home. Anymore because we have such a weak leader. This is a big problem. <laughs> now, um, yeah, so you did that all by yourself. You have a whiteboard or of course you do back to um the messaging forget yes yeah they don't look nobody greg nobody can tell you shit about messaging buddy not with those kind of branding mnemonic skills forget about the messaging this is our lived experience okay. <laughs> is it yes this is my lived experience and it informs who i am okay diversity is greg kelly's strength we know this. We know this in our bones. That's what America is going through. The swamp. If you know it in your bones, why do you need a mnemonic? Right? What did Joe stand for? I forget. Uh, just us opening eggplants. Uh, I don't know where the, the wag was. Uh, we're a go. Because things are going well. Uh, Joe. Um, just us opening eggplants because it's, you know, we're obviously going to all be vegan. Chaos. Um, Kick-ass operating system. I'm going with the kind of uh, get smart spelling. And um, yeah, border. All they can really talk about is border infatuation, design, uh, uh, earth, and... Nani poo poo. Who's up? Who's down? There's no way this guy gets to. <laughs> I just don't think it's going to work out for him. Do you? This is the latest disaster. He gets all dressed up, gets on Air Force One to go to Pennsylvania today to give a big speech to support the two candidates there running for the Senate and running for governor. He gets it totally backwards in his head. He totally reverses it. He blows it. The moment of truth, he blows. Please. Please elect the Attorney General of the Senate. <laughs> elect that big old boy to be governor. Got it backwards. He got it. So the uh, the Senate, the the governor's little. Did you see him walk out there? He's huge. Backwards. The attorney general is a man named Shapiro, okay? He is running, uh, not for the U.S. Senate, Joe. He's running for governor, all right? You got it wrong. And that big guy, that big old boy, as you call him, John Fetterman with the hoodie, uh, he's not running for governor. He's running for the U.S. Senate. Now, this is what we call a major league gaffe. Yeah, these people are not going to know who to vote for. He threw it, I mean, but yeah, that's it. I guess that's it. I mean, the voters are going to go in there and they're going to see a picture and they're going to go, who do I vote for? All right. And up until Joe Biden, that's what the press in D.C., in all of their vapid glory, that's what they live for, catching politicians in a gaffe. Well, this one was ignored. Now, at this point, I would expect MSNBC to do that. They did. All right. Uh, what's her name? Nicole Wallace comes on. They have a panel of people and nobody bothers to mention that he didn't endorse the right candidate for the right office. That's a big... He brought him up and talked to them. Big deal. But again, it's MSNBC. Go around the dial and I look at Fox. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Here it comes. And me without popcorn. Fox News Channel. What the hell has become of them? Watch this. No mention whatsoever. Right after this... It was huge. This gaffe was terrible. It was the, I mean, it's almost like Michigan gave us Motown, gave us Motown, gave us the Mustang. It's like it didn't happen.
And here, the president close to wrapping up, has indeed wrapped up uh, in Pennsylvania, addressing his push to beef up law enforcement and to say uh, that he's really not for defunding the police, never said he was. And this effort today to hire 100,000 more cops is an indication of that and much more. Uh, we got Brian Yenis with him in uh, Pennsylvania with more. Brian. Hey, Neil. Well, the president just wrapped up his speech here on crime. And in a flip of the script, he he said that he opposes defunding the FBI, which is something that Republicans have been saying since President Trump's home was raided by the FBI in Mar-a-Lago. He also... Look at fucking Greg. I... 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 Go, said that any- oh, oh, I'm a party. Anybody who doesn't denounce what happened on January 6th in the Capitol is not for supporting We just heard him say that, by the way, all right? He ignores the major, the major mistake. Why, why didn't you bring up the fact that Biden said fund the police and is against defunding the FBI, Greg? That would be a major part of the conversation, one would think. Why would you do that? Why would Fox News do that? What's going on? Am I the only one? Yes, you're the only one. You're a, you're a lonely, lonely man. Um, that's no one cares. Now, after, after Trump calling Mike Pence's wife Carrot Pence, and then less than a year later uh, saying her husband deserves to be hung, we got bigger fish to fry. Nobody gives a fuck. Pretty incredible. You got to admit, all right? <laughs> Anyway, oh, and by the way, to Neil Cavuto, who is uh, a nice guy, uh, Joe Biden has come out for defunding the police. Yes, he has. He said it out loud. You can look it up. He said it in 2020 when defunding the police was cool. Well, play it. He said it. That was his position. Flip flopper. All right. Flip flopper. Get the fuck out of here. He said defund the police, and he and he he jacked off right on my forehead when it happened, and I still. Uh, I'll, here's the one moment of substance from the speech, okay? But it's not really substantive. Do you think this is going to change anything? This is an idea straight out of 1973. My plan invests in crime prevention programs that help keep young people from getting in trouble in the first place. Under my plan, communities can, one, provide after-school and summer job programs. They get paid for more access to mental health and drug counseling, more social workers and housing to keep people off the streets instead of when they get out of, when they got out of jail to get $0.25 cent dollars on a bus ticket and end up under the same bridge that they were under before. Wow. Social workers? After school programs? Part-time job? Wow, this sounds like an agenda for 1974 if I ever- uh, 100,000 more cops, you dipshit. Like he just, again, this is why I play the whole clip. This is what, this is a great example of why when somebody posts something, I do the whole fucking thing. Ah, thanks, Dark Al. You ever heard one, huh? Thanks, Joe. Then it was back. Just the bitterness. Ah, it's great. I do have to say I'm enjoying this at the tail end of my day, and it's been a long one, watching Greg Kelly just kind of writhe in misery, knowing that not only was Mar-a-Lago raided, he's never been invited there, and he wasn't there when it happened. Back to dividing America and lying. By the way, no one expects politics to be a patty cake. They sometimes get mean as hell, but the idea you turn on the television and see senior senators and congressmen saying, if such and such happens, there'll be blood in the street. Where the hell are we? All right. Blood in the street. Why is he always telling ghost stories, huh? Why is he always trying to scare people? Yeah. Why can't he just come out like Lindsey Graham and say there will be riots in the street? Now, what he's referring to is Lindsey Graham. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And... When has there ever been blood during a riot? And they used to be friends. Now he really hates Lindsay. Um, and Lin- You love him, though. That's the thing. I mean, Lindsay and you get along. You're like, you're thick as thieves. This, you two are like this, and this is him. 
Um, you know, he introduced you to the joys of pegging, and I think it's about time. Thank you, Kerry. Graham, who I'm not the biggest fan of, but you know what? Cut him some slack. He was just telling it like it is. This is not a threat. This <laughs> yeah, it's a threat that he's basically just explaining that morons like Greg might flip out. This is a, a worry. This, this is a worry. He was concerned. He's just telling you it's upsetting. It's a fear, and it's well-founded. It's well-founded. Maggots are crazy. They're dangerous. Why do you think Trump needed 10,000 National Guard people to surround the Capitol? Because he knows his followers are fucking lunatics, you know? Say this. If there's a prosecution of Donald Trump for mishandling classified information after the Clinton debacle... Uh, it's not uh, mishandling. He was uh, destroying and absconding with it. He was stealing it, not mishandling it. Miss Lindsay. What you presided over and did a hell of a good job. There'll be riots in the streets. That's not calling for violence. He's worried about it, okay? Yeah, he's just worried. Thank you for being our Lindsay whisperer, Greg. I appreciate it. Hey, Joe, you are... Enjoy that reach around. You've earned it. So committed to stirring the pot, aren't you? Yes, stirring that pot, that the great melting pot, making sure that everything stays melted and and the great fondue of America. So committed to dividing. Um, France, the French don't even have a word for fondue. Us. And uh, yeah, I'll say it again. We yes, we know you're repeating yourself. We boarded up stores, businesses all over the place just prior to the November 2020 election. Now what, why were those businesses taking these precautions? Because uh, Donald Trump was a shit president and fish stinks from the head and things got really violent and his total disregard for public safety and kind of his vengeful attitude towards protesters led to led to them spreading throughout the entire country because he's incapable of communicating. They were worried that if Biden lost decisively, there would be riots in the streets. Yeah, that's why. Okay. With yeah, they were. that's what they were worried about. And then when Trump lost decisively, there were riots in the fucking Capitol. Hear that, Nancy Pelosi? Craig Kelly thinks you should have boarded up the goddamn Capitol. Did they want blood in the streets? No, they were. They were just, but they were expecting a certain amount. Not everywhere, mostly around Dolce Gabbana. Worried about it. They were preparing for it. They didn't want it. And that's the same for uh, Lindsey Graham. Meanwhile, Democrats, <laughs> when they call for violence, it's, uh, well, <laughs> I guess because they. <laughs> When they cut <laughs> social justice, no, they just call for violence. They do all the time. They just call for violence. Just say, be violent. I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. Maybe there will be. There needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. You gotta be ready to throw a punch. You have to be ready to throw a punch. Don yeah, metaphorically. Donald Trump, I think you need to go back and, and punch him in the face. That I thought he should have punched him in the face. I feel like punching him. I think I'd like to take him behind the gym if I were in high school. If we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. No, I wish we were in high school, I could take him behind the gym. I will go all right, and all right. take him we've, <laughs> we've seen this a million times. And there's and Johnny Depp. Yes, uh, like, that's a quick fade. No denying it. This is part of the public record. You it's totally, it's there. Okay, that's what they want. They want violence, okay? Sure, they never engaged in it. and None of their direct followers were the ones that engaged in the violence at the Capitol, especially, or even in the rioting on the streets and that they were wholly unrelated to Donald Trump and more so about police violence. <clears throat> but you've seen it, I've seen it. They call for violence all the time, but when they do it, it's righteous? I don't know. No, no, it's wrong. I think it's stupid. I bring it up all the time. I'm not for it. I do not call for it. I will not call for it. But I also will not be okay with just pretending that January 6th was a fiction or that Ashley Babbitt, who engaged in trespassing, was the first through the breach and was shot because she, was, she came in there with the intent to harm human beings. That she's somehow innocent and that's that this is just some their way of hanging this on Trump. No, we don't do it, by the way. And Lindsey Graham did not do it.
Here's something else. Joe Biden is going to speak on Thursday night, a primetime address to the nation. Battle for the soul of the nation. Yeah, that's what he's... When Joe Biden talks about soul, it reminds me that I don't think he has one. Well, that's... There you go. At least he's not dehumanizing him. <laughs> when he talks like this, really... Really, he's just basically... It's like a zombie, a monster zombie who wants to eat my face. And anything is justified. I wish I had a crossbow and greasy hair. Be on guard. This is, um, this is a dishonest man, and there is a major hole in his heart. Um, and I yeah, where his dead son used to be, dumb fuck. I have proof, quite frankly. I have proof. You've heard it. We're in the battle for the soul of this nation. Oh, well, that's even more true today. We are in the battle for the soul of this nation. Today, on this January day, my whole soul is in this. Bringing America together, uniting our people, uniting our nation. We remain in the battle right. for the soul of And it goes on like this. It goes on. He, he hates playing the whole clip. He has no patience. It's great. On like this, lecturing us about the soul of America when he lies in the very next set, uh, statement, or he makes a- Which very next, then play the very next statement, fucko. What are you talking about? Promise that he has no intention or ability to fulfill. All right, well, if he doesn't have the ability, maybe it's aspirational. <laughs> oh, you're not talking about like healthcare plans and infrastructure bills like Trump had problems with, right? Like total lack of capability and disinterest. The Charlottesville thing really bothers me. His it does, of course. Because Trump did not say that there were good people on both sides. He said that there were fine people on both sides. And those people were not all Nazis. Some of them just were there to protect a Robert E. Lee statue erected in 1952 as a commemoration of the Confederate forces and the war against the North. This whole campaign was based on what Donald Trump said or didn't say about Charlottesville, right? That's what he told us. This is his campaign announcement back in 2019. And he was so moved. Um, here he is, lying. That's when we heard the words of the President of the United States that stunned the world and shocked the conscience of this nation. He said there were, quote, some very fine people on both sides. Very find people on both sides. In that moment, I knew the threat to this nation was unlike any I had ever seen in my lifetime. <laughs> if Joe thought it was such a threat, maybe he would have watched the entire press conference, okay? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, uh, obviously, I totally, and obviously, and Proud Boys stand back and stand by. Look, but uh, Donald Trump didn't say that. It's one of the biggest lies ever told. Ever. Uh, the Charlottesville lie. You know about the race riot that happened and the, the horrible... It, the race riot that happened. Is that what it was? Is that what Charlottesville was? A race riot? Stampede and the car and it was all... The stampede and the car. I'm sorry. Was What race was, in, was rioting involved in a stampede and a car? Awful. But here's what Donald Trump said. He was explicit about who he was condemning. You also had people that were very fine people on both sides. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists. Yeah, just pro-Confederate heritage uh, people who wanted to keep the Confederate flag and a Robert E. Lee statue up as a reminder to anybody who thinks they can let their guard down in the city. Nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. I'm sorry, the people what? Which people? The people who want to keep the Robert E. Lee statue? Fuck them. They're not indicative of even the majority of the white people in that area. That's why they voted to take it down. He's absolutely right. You can be a very- Thanks, H. Pollyanna. Very fine person and totally against those Confederate flags. Totally. And you- 
And still, you can be a very fine person and say, you know what, we have to maintain our history. Even if it's unfortunate, we can't take down statues and pretend the past didn't happen. You, you don't. You can move them into a museum. You can put them out to pasture. They just don't get prime spots in downtown. And by the way, these statues didn't come up during or right after the fucking Civil War. They haven't been there since 1890 or some shit. They were put in in the 50s, some of them. He could be a very fine person that way. He was not talking about neo-Nazis and skinheads. No, he was talking about Confederate heritage uh, supporters. And, and they're not very fine people. They have a fucked up thought form. And they're not indicative of the other white people around. Who said, you, you don't have to have that statue in town. You can put it in a fucking museum. We can talk about it later. You need to know your history. But our history is not, we are Americans. We're not going to put fucking chess pieces for the losing side on the board every time we turn around. It's all right. Anyway, this is a guy, Biden, who is out to stir the pot and um, not live up to his solemn, sacred promise. This is where I really worry about his soul. If it's Yes, you're, I can tell you're worried about his soul. It's there, and if it is there, where it's going. You worry if his soul is there and where it's going. So his his soul is, uh, according to Greg Kelly, uh, who's, uh, you know, gotten a leg up legally in difficult moral times from his dad, uh, is worried about uh, that Biden is going to go to hell. Today, on this January day, my whole soul is in this, bringing America together, uniting our people. Uniting in our nation. <laughs> and he didn't lift a finger to do that. <laughs> Sorry, the American Rescue Package was only for blue states? How about the infrastructure bill? What about rural uh, broadband? Was that only for blue states? Is he, did he deny p like uh, PPE and stuff like that to states that weren't sufficiently loyal to him? Did Kamala Harris have to go over to states that wouldn't kiss his ass and beg for support in situations? Did he leave out... Eastern Kentucky or fucking Mississippi in his emergency declarations that he drag his fucking heels like Trump did. Wouldn't it have been great if he forgave the January 6 people? Hmm? Forgave them? Yeah, you're forgiven. You still got to go to fucking jail. That would have been you. He's, he's not the forgiver in chief, stupid. But no, he he's not going to pardon them. Why didn't Trump pardon them? It was around demonizing them throughout his presidency all the time. Every time, I mean, every time he turns around, he can't shut up about January 6th people who are in jail currently. And even today, as recently as today, he's still at it, stirring the pot. Stirring the pot, reminding people that Trump supporters attacked the fucking Capitol. I mean, we'll let it go, okay? We lost, we got it. Can we at least have an Ashley Babbitt statue in Charlottesville now? It's, got, it's all I ask. For a political gain. Today, this happened. Let me say this to my MAGA Republican friends in Congress. Don't tell me you support law enforcement if you won't condemn what happened on the 6th. Don't tell me. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Can't do it. For God's sake, whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? Look. You're either on the side of a mob or the side of the police. You can't be pro-law enforcement and pro-insurrection. You can't be a party of law and order and call the people who attacked the police on January 6th patriots. You can't do it. Right. Yeah, look look at Greg. Oh, this is great. Greg, uh, every time I think there might be a moment where life lets up on Greg enough, where if he just fucking went outside, had a fucking pretzel, and looked at the sky for like 10 minutes, he might just kind of like alleviate some of the misery, but man, he just sticks his dick in the vice and starts cranking 
every night. Look at his fucking face. It's, uh, by the way, what Biden said is absolutely right. Meet with pliable stats. Oh, thank you. Shout out to the trolls. Sending love your way. Uh, tamp down your hate. You can't quit us. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. By the way, uh, yeah, thanks trolls for being here. You guys spread us out in the algorithm more than anybody else. Uh, we love our regulars, but you guys are the ones that diversify our reach. And thank you for that. We appreciate it. I apologize if my chat doesn't react negatively like other chats do and you don't get the same rise. But hey, man, just take a break. You're okay. You're going to be okay here. You're, you might at some point even realize you're not surrounded by enemies. Crazy thought. I know. And I, you know, when I call you maggots and stuff like that, it's because you attach yourself to MAGA. Not because if, understand this. Even if I called you a fucking maggot and I thought you were awful, if a bookshelf fell on you, I'd help lift it off you. I'm just saying. If you were in a burning car, I'd pull you out. That's how I feel. Genuine, not a joke. It's over a year and a half ago. Uh-huh. And he's still talking about it. <laughs> so are you, fucko. You, you're still, you're still like, uh, uh, wanting to, I guess, sanctify Ashley Babbitt into sainthood. In the most divisive way imaginable. No, the most divisive way imaginable would not to use MAGA Republicans just say Republicans and then it, and not even ask the question, whose side are you on? You The most decisive, or divisive way possible, you'd say, you're on the side of murdering cops. Everybody knows it. I know it. Dogs know it. Shame on you. Leave the country. I think that would be, if I got to say, as the, that would be the, <laughs> that'd be the most divisive way without using a splitting mall, I suppose. Why is he doing that? Because he's... <laughs> Why is he doing that? Because some of the cops are still living with their injuries. Some of the trials are still going on. Some of the cops that were injured on that day got out of the hospital and now have to go through a fucking trial where they have to point out the person that injured them. He's not making good on his promise. He's violating it. That solemn pledge he made to you, me, and God. He's yeah, well, here's what you got to know. You got, he's telling you, you got to choose a side. You got to be on the side of law and order if you say you are. And if you're not, you're a liar. Stop lying. That doesn't mean you don't get called out on your shit, dumb dumb. Sarah Palin lost her special election to Alaska indigenous woman Pertola. That's hilarious. Sarah Palin lost her election. In, oh, God, Tabitha, that's fantastic. <laughs> we get to end the show on a lovely note blowing it off. And oh, by the way, what about these people? What about the people who stampeded and marauded around this country in Black Lives Matter? And yes, holding up signs that say, I can't breathe because someone was murdered. Well, it, we have police reform and then the president uh, supplied them with funds to rebuild their stations, get new vehicles, get new stuff, hire some new cops, train them better, uh, make mental health services available so people, you know, get regular help before they snap and need police to intervene. You know, adult shit. 2020. He didn't condemn it. Yeah. Uh, yes, he did. Yeah, he did. Arson and theft aren't pro protesting. He made the, he made the distinction. It was one of the, one of the ways that people thought he wasn't going to win the democratic nomination was because he went that far on it. He harnessed it for, he harnessed it. Yeah. Basically that, I mean, is that the Minneapolis Police Department during the weeks after George Floyd was killed? Or is that the voting booth there? I can't tell him apart. Political gain. His gain. His gain. Yes, he, he gained. Now, Trump harnessed a mob. His loss and then lost. He lost. He lost and then, I guess technically he lost and then tried to win using the mob. And then he lost again. And he's lost several times since then, I suppose. It's a nice thought. All right. Now. All right. Fuck. Next. Finally. Finally. The end of this. Jesus. 
You know, he makes that big speech today. I love Minneapolis, by the way. Absolutely, William. And the political set, the swamp, you know, the Brit Humes, the uh, Kelly Wallace, whatever her name is. Yeah, whoever. The re uh, Republicans in name, in, in nocturne only. They watch it and they, they focus on one thing. They fo mm -hmm. focus on the messaging, the words, what's emphasized. <laughs> what he's actually going to do as far as legal plans, like an assault weapons ban and funding police. The f yeah. Y you still haven't recognized this, dummy, that no matter what a politician says, none of it has any effect on your life until it becomes policy, then law, and, and then it actually has the movement of the federal government or the state government behind it. Derp. Thank you, Laura. What's not emphasized, right? That's all they're really equipped to do. Take a look. This president unveiling the sharpest message we've heard from him since he was a candidate for office himself, leading the country at a time of violence around 1-6, uh, a central message. It appears um, that message has been received and processed and delivered today. What do you think? Nicole, I was really impressed with the way the speech was written to tie um, several issues together, to be number one explicitly pro- I, By the way, I just love the fact that Greg Kelly is off camera grinding in his fucking seat right now. Oh, police. But this entire message, message was about the Democrats um, supporting law enforcement and as, <laughs> folks, as Mike folks. said, flipping- the <laughs> get, Like you can't- this is this is the Greg Kelly uh, like methodology now. It's about to say something people will like. You see, all they can do is evaluate words. <laughs> oh, all, they, all right. Yeah, it's part of the job, dummy. It's a, it, they're about. Will these words turn into action? Or will these words not turn into action? I don't know. Maybe I should write something down about this. Right, fucko. Look how mad he they're is. They're not equipped to do more than that. No, they're not equipped to understand the hole in his soul that means he's going to hell because he called a subsection of MAGA Republicans semi-fascist. They don't know what's happening in America. They don't know. They have no idea. How do they know? They don't know the way Greg Kelly knows. They don't know. They don't see what life is like on the bus. They don't know what we know. What do you know, Craig? What do you know? What do I know? So, Abby, what is it that you know? It's kind of amazing how out of touch they are. The it's terrible. Out of touch with what exactly? Swamp. With the, uh, They're out of touch with the swamp. Well, well. Maybe there's no swamp. Um, is that a, do you ever think about that? Maybe there's not technically, maybe the swamp is a phrase made up by people who want to appear like outsiders and sell themselves as, you know, when it's really just a fun functioning part of the bureaucracy and it's every organization has a shitty part of it. And that's what they call it sometimes and not all the time. All right. So we've lived it. We've lived it. We know. Have you? You've lived it on the bus, Greg. What the fuck is he talking about? It. That's why I'm not worried about the midterms, quite frankly. I'm not worried about the midterms. We're going to lose them anyways. But frankly, they can worry about messaging and uh, what all that stuff. I'm going to worry about the giant hole I pretend is in Joe Biden's soul. Said six seconds ago, but we know where we are and how we. Where are we? And we're here. And this is us. And we're here now. And I'm here. How are you? How I'm fine. How are you? Uh, this is stupid. Uh, um, we had, we got a, a small uh, no 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 small uh, gas leak down here. Uh, takes a little while to uh, uh, tap down. Could could in a uh, but yeah, we got some nuclear power. You know what? Um, what's your call number? Um, boring conversation, anyways. Luke, we're gonna have company. We got here, and who's at fault? And why we're there, and who's underneath, and who's on top, and who, who's whose line is it, anyways? And if we're ever at a picnic or a you know, who knows? Yeah, Greg, I'm gonna go out on a limb. The chances of Greg Kelly being at a picnic that isn't a business arranged fake picnic involving a baseball game between networks or some shit, like a personal picnic, not fucking happening. There's two things that ruin a picnic. 
Ants and Greg Kelly. We have a clever little mnemonic device to recall all the issues, right? No, I don't remember it. Schmag, schmag One more time. Do we remember? Flag. No, we don't. I don't remember it. I, I don't remember it. Why? Right. So we are good. Joe, Joe owns everything. Uh, Ken, uh, Hal, uh, ascend over something. Um, but if, uh, uh, beverage, uh, indigo dinner, um, elevator nuisance. Bag Joe Chaos Biden. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. That's that and that wow, what a quick out. Look at that shit. That's the tail that's how you fucking bailed on this thing. Um, do we remember? No. Wag Joe Chaos Biden. That was that was amazing. Um by the way, uh you're not you're not taking crazy pills. Greg Kelly just lectured us all on messaging and language and words and just mincing and peer they just use words and they just dissect what words means and then he made up wag joe chaos biden as a you know man woman camera tv horse feathers phrase that nobody's gonna fucking remember nobody can and again if this is our lived experience and we feel it in our bones why would you need a stupid phrase to remember all the things you hate about Joe Biden? What, what they ha did they have a meeting at fucking Newsmax where they were like, guys, uh, we've been doing some focus grouping. Um, am I still last? Yes, Greg, you're still last. Um, and um, by the way, Greta, um, you're doing terrible in Greg's slot, but better than he ever did. So, I mean, it's Newsmax. But we've been doing some focus grouping and what we've recognized is that uh, people are having a hard time remembering why they're supposed to be mad at Joe Biden. So we need to fix this. Greg, sit down. Um, so if all of you on your program could come up, Greg, give me a second. Put your hand down. Uh, uh, the adults are talking. If you could come up with a way that, wa wag what? Just, I don't know what, simmer. Okay. Um, so Greta and, um, Rob, I don't remember what your last name is. You work in the mornings, right? If you guys could just spit, Greg, please. I can hear you fidgeting, okay? That's strike two. If you guys could come up with a way that we could all um, sort of help our viewers remember why they're miserable. Um, then uh, maybe, that, maybe that'll help us uh, move our team down the road in a... Uh, yeah, you know, in a powerful way for the midterms. And I, Greg, shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, thank you, J.D. Christie. Yay. Got a member on. Uh, it's lovely. Um, so anyways, break. We'll see you guys later. Now, Greg, what? Sh Greg, stop crying. What were you talking about? What does wag Joe Ch Chaos? I don't know what that means. Why would it be wag? It makes me think of a dog. It makes him seem friendly. Biden has a dog. It's one of the things that people endear about him. They can't stand the fact that Trump has never had a pet because it would die. I don't know what it's... Go write it down. So, Gail, listen. Um, Greg's coming up to graphics. He has another one of his phrases. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, apparently each... Yeah, yeah, each letter, right, each letter, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, um, is a different word, and, yeah, and it's to help people, yeah, it's, it's our mission now, to help people remember why they, uh, they hate Joe Biden, what? What do you mean you like the infrastructure bill? I don't know why they voted against capping insulin, what's the... Did I did I dial the wrong number, motherfucker? Um, so, thanks very much for tuning in. What a long one! I've basically been in this seat, but for one hour uh, all day. So.
Much love to you guys. I'm going to go rest my voice and my head and my body and my booty. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. And don't remember, don't forget, next weekend, uh, not this weekend, but the following, I'm going to be in uh, D.C., Sexy Liberal, sexyliberal.com. And then two weeks after that, Chicago. Very exciting. Um, and then this, the right after Chicago is uh, I'm in Flappers again in Burbank that Wednesday, last Wednesday of the month. Um, super good. Adore you guys. Much love. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. I got to get out of here. It's a, it's a Midwestern goodbye again. Love you guys. Okay, bye. <laughs>